Hey readers, this is Liz Davidson from Beyond Solitaire and I'm going to talk about what I read in the month of May. I read 12 books in May. I consider that to be a pretty good reading month. So let's go ahead and go through what was on the list. The first book I read in May was called The American Granddaughter and it is by Inam Kachachi. It is the story of a woman who is from Iraq and she immigrates to the United States and because of her fluent Arabic, she realizes she can make a lot of money by becoming a translator. And so she works as a translator for the army. She goes to Iraq and she reconnects with members of her family who are still there. One of whom is her grandmother, who she loves dearly. And another of whom is her milk brother, as in this kid that she kind of grew up with a little bit. And he's just taken a really different path in life. And so the book is just a really interesting set of observations about what it's like to be from two countries to try to reconnect with a homeland that you've gotten really far away from to try to please family that you love but there's nothing that you can do to be the person they want you to be it's just a really interesting book there were there were a few things i didn't like about the writing and some quirks to the main character that i didn't love the most but this was a really interesting read and i think if you want to read about the middle east then it might go on your list the second book i read last month was liberty by caitlin greenidge and liberty is basically the story of this girl who is the daughter of a very prominent female physician who is black and working hard to make her way in the world and, and she wants her daughter to kind of follow her same path however liberty has her own needs and her own ideas and so she kind of goes her own way and it causes pain to her, it causes pain to her mother, and it's very much this kind of interesting, you know, like there's another love story in it, but, um, you know, I, I think the book is really a love story between a mother and a daughter, these two people who are really attached to each other and who wanna have this really strong relationship and they need to figure out how they're going to do it. There were parts of the book dragged a little bit, and then there were other parts that were really sublimely beautiful. Overall, I would say that it is a read if you're interested in the subject matter. The third book I read last month was called The Dawn Prayer. It's by Matthew Schreier, and it's actually a companion memoir to one I read a little bit ago. That one was Blindfold by Theo Padnos. So what's interesting is that both of these guys got kidnapped by Jabhat al-Nusra, which is the Syrian arm of Al-Qaeda. They were both held prisoner for an extended period of time, and they both wrote memoirs. Interestingly, they also despise each other. So reading both of the memoirs actually made for a really interesting experience because you could see where their stories matched, where they didn't, how they perceived each other, how they wanted to present themselves. And I think that nobody's ever gonna know the full truth about what they went through or who is right about whose character. But reading them both trying to set the tone of their story was really, really interesting. Having read both memoirs, I would say that Schreier is more generally entertaining. However, he does seem like kind of an asshole. Theo seems annoying in his own way, frankly, but he also seems a little more contemplative. So it's really interesting to like look at both of their perspectives and just be like, wow, I'm assuming that everybody just kind of sucks after several months of being tortured and that's, that's really what happened. But uh, if you want to see two conflicting narratives, this is a great opportunity. And of course, the subject itself is just really interesting. You know, um, Islamic extremism is a thing in our world and I like learning about it. So it's also interesting to read both memoirs in that light. My next book of May was The Sundown Motel by Simone St. James. And this is another one that wasn't necessarily peaking at like greatness, but it was very entertaining. So The Sundown Motel is this creepy book about a girl whose aunt disappeared long ago while working the night shift at this creepy motel. And so, you know, kind of lost in life and adrift, this girl decides to try to figure out what happened to her aunt. So she goes to the Sundown Motel and starts discovering the same creepy mystery that her aunt had stumbled upon back in the 80s. And so if you want some atmospheric creepiness and, you know, if you're into true crime, because that's like a theme that comes up throughout the book, and you just want a really good beach read that's more spine tingly than romantic, then I think that the Sundown Motel might be a good choice for you. I didn't love the ending, but I was very amused the whole time I was reading it. It had me on the edge of my seat a few times. So if you want just something exciting, fun, but still pretty light, this is a really good choice. 
the next book I read in May was one that I really liked, actually. It wasn't a five star, it was a four star read, and it's called Imposter Syndrome. It's by Kathy Wang. So this one I got in my Book of the Month Club box, and I really enjoyed it. It's kind of a cross of genres, you know, it's, um, it's a mixture between a thriller and then just sort of a uh, a book about women getting through their lives. And I kind of liked that. So the main premise of the book is that there's this Russian plant who has been commissioned to create this incredibly successful social network in Silicon Valley in order to pass information onto the Russians. However, they're starting to push her for information that she can't give without ruining her business. And she's come to really love her lifestyle in the United States. At the same time, one of the female underling employees has started to discover that something's wrong and maybe detect some of the suspicious activity on the servers and things get really, really dramatic. And, you know, they dance around each other. And at the same time, there's stuff going on in their lives that's really meaningful outside of just a spy drama. So I think there will be some people who think it's not enough spy drama because it's too much about their personal lives and about the, the main characters as people. But I actually really liked that. I, um, I would read something else that's kind of that blend of genres again, because I really dug this. Next, I read The Badass Librarians of Timbuktu. And that one is by Joshua Hammer. I wanted to like it a lot more than I did. Essentially, it is a book that is about people smuggling ancient manuscripts out of Al-Qaeda controlled territory in Timbuktu. So the book mostly centers around a man whose life's mission it was to collect all these manuscripts and kind of show off African heritage and scholarship and display all of these things in Timbuktu. And that part I really, really liked. I actually could have probably just read about him figuring out how to get people to sell him their manuscripts forever because it was really, really interesting. However, the book eventually focuses a little bit too much on the Al-Qaeda part. So there's maybe too many details of Al-Qaeda invasion stuff that doesn't have to do with the manuscripts. And then it details his, and then it details the main guy's desire to smuggle things out of Timbuktu so that Al-Qaeda doesn't get them. I think the thing that made the book not work is that there was no direct threat to the manuscripts that we know of during the Al-Qaeda occupation. So like maybe something could have happened to the manuscripts and there are a couple scary moments, but the story is really about somebody being cautious and trying to move the manuscripts as opposed to somebody who is taking them out in the dark of night, but they're in immediate danger. So I think that a lot of the Al-Qaeda descriptions about the bad things that Al-Qaeda does were kind of justifying the reasoning behind moving the manuscripts, but that also took away from the drama of the story and away from attention on, you know, the manuscripts. So it was an interesting book. I learned a lot from it, but I think it had some balance issues. And I think that those came from maybe making a little too much out of the story that wasn't quite grounded in fact. So this next book, sadly, is my worst book of the month. It was Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. And so Ariadne is a mythological retelling. So if you've read Circe or Song of Achilles or The Silence of the Girls, you know, it's, it's popular these days to do kind of modern, more in-depth emotional retellings of myths from, you know, Greco-Roman culture. And it's also, you know, important to give those more emotional resonance. There's a lot of focusing on women or on side characters who are not just the typical like er, heroes. And I was expecting Ariadne to be in that vein, and it is, but it had some really serious weaknesses that I did not appreciate ultimately. So Ariadne herself is not a particularly compelling character in my opinion. You know, she kind of gets left places by men and just puts up with it. Um, and that's in contrast with the person she tells herself that she's going to be because she thinks about, you know, the gods being horrible to mortals and us all being sort of crushed under the wheel of divine whims. She's like, I will be like the Medusa. I'll confront everything and I'll be really strong. And then she just kind of sits around forever in the book. And, you know, her moments where she asserts her independence just really aren't anything that impressive. So, I mean, that part was like, okay. And then the book also brings in her sister, Phaedra, who is infamous in mythology for falling in love with her stepson. And that's a whole thing. And of course, the book will tell you about that. But what irritated me the most is that this is an entire book about humans being subject to the whims of the gods and the gods having no respect for human life. And then Phaedra gets presented as somebody who is selfish and silly on her own in her misplaced affections for her stepson. 
But actually, it's Aphrodite cursing the stepson for spurning love and marriage by punishing the stepmom, which is exactly the same thing that happened to Phaedra and Ariadne's mother on Crete, where Minos messed up. And so Poseidon punishes him by making his wife, Pacify, fall in love with a bull, which creates the Minotaur. So why wouldn't you make that really obvious connection? Aphrodite is just screwing with everybody to satisfy herself, and it's cruel, just like other cruel actions that get pointed out in the book about the gods. But Phaedra's just a bad person somehow? It made me crazy. I gave it two stars because it was like entertaining enough, but mm, as a myth retelling, I'm not buying it. And then I, I got like a million books from my Book of the Month Club box this past month. Uh, I then read How Lucky, and it's by Will Leitch. And this book is kind of a thriller, which is kind of a slice of life book about a man who has a degenerative disease and his muscles are slowly giving out. He can't really talk anymore. He lives his life in a wheelchair and he works online customer service on Twitter. <laughs> His descriptions of Twitter life are pretty accurate and quite charming, but basically has a pretty strict daily schedule. And he knows that at a certain time he watched this girl get into a car on the road and he remembers it being an unusual thing that he saw. When that girl goes missing later, it turns out that he might be the key to solving a crime and it's hard for him to get people to listen to him and take him seriously because of his disability. So it was actually a pretty interesting story and, you know, it's set in Athens, Georgia. There's kind of a cute, quaint vibe because it's that small town, football town life that is being presented in this kind of warm and sweet way. But, um, you know, there were also parts where it kind of degenerated into a tutorial about the main character's disease and what he can and can't do. And while it's important factually, um, it also kind of threw off the plot of the book a little bit. So it was a decent read. It was very entertaining. But I'm not really sure I'm going to have very strong memories of this book in six months either. So after that, I read the best book that I read all month. It's so good I'm going to make a separate video about it because I just really, really loved it. And this one was called... Eat the Buddha, Life and Death in a Tibetan Town. And it's by Barbara Demick. And this is really interesting. Basically, she wrote this amazing nonfiction account speaking to Tibetan, mostly refugees, about their life under Chinese occupation, the kinds of ways that they reconciled their identity, the things they chose to do. Do they stay? Do they go? How do they have families? It was just a really well-investigated, well-considered book. And I liked it a lot. So stay tuned because in a couple days I'll be releasing a video about just that one. And then to cap off my month, I read a YA sci-fi trilogy. I've actually tried to read it before and not finished. I made it like halfway through the second book, but I finished it this time. And it was Red Rising by Pierce Brown. So I made it through all three books. I will tell you the reason that I did that is because I review board games and I have a board game with a Red Rising theme that I'm reviewing right now. So I wanted to reread the trilogy to kind of connect what was in the books to the game. And so it was kind of work reading. I do not think I would have made it through the trilogy again had it not been for that. Um, each of the books I gave three stars. I thought the first one was actually the worst in the series because the main character Darrow was so irritating that I just couldn't take it. But, um, but, you know, the series was interesting enough. It just didn't really grab and hold me. The characters were okay. There were moments where they annoyed me. And, you know, I don't regret reading the trilogy, but I really would not have powered through the whole thing if I didn't also have a board game to review about it. So I capped off my month with that trilogy, but I know there's a fourth Red Rising book out now, Iron Gold, I think, and I'm not going to bother. I'm sure that's fine, but... There's so many books out there. I'm not going to spend time on fine on purpose. So those are the books that I read in May. June's already shaping up to be a good month. I'm already a book deep and I'm filming this on June 2nd. So stay tuned. Let me know if you read anything interesting last month and happy reading.